Ladies and gentlemen, this interview is brought to you by Burn It Up Coaching and the 21 Day Challenge. If you're an entrepreneur or high achiever and you feel like you're stuck, you've plateaued, you're spinning your wheels, you're just not experiencing the greatest possible self life that you know you're capable of, the 21 Day Challenge might be the reignition of your passion and self belief so you can succeed like never before. What we'll do is we'll get clear on your life purpose. We'll be able to break that down into bite-sized steps and have a clear specific goal of your 21-day challenge. What is the top priority that will make the biggest difference for you that makes everything else easy or unnecessary? So I'll have you uh, go through that process. We'll dial in your morning, your nighttime routines, what you're supposed to be doing. You'll have daily check-ins and progress supports and weekly deep dive calls to make sure that you're uncovering the limiting beliefs, the self-sabotage, and things that are keeping you stuck or stopped from achieving your greatest possible self. If you're interested and committed, send me a message, chris at beyourgps.com, and let me know you're interested in the 21-day challenge, or if you want to send me a message on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash th3burns. Looking forward to talking to you and seeing if the 21-day challenge is the right fit for you. If it's not, I'll direct you towards some other resources or people who would be a better fit for you sending you lots of love looking forward to seeing you in the 21 day challenge next is the itunes review of the week and this week it's by kevin bersiaga and kevin says best new podcast of 2018 this is the best new podcast i've found in 2018 there's so many great episodes quit filling your mind with polarized politics and bad news news and start listening to chris Thanks so much, Kevin. I appreciate you, and we appreciate the feedback. And if you want to give us feedback and let us know what you really love about the show, what's the best part about it, and how we could improve, go ahead and go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes, and I'll take you to the iTunes store, and you can rate, review, and subscribe there. Or you can search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on iTunes and rate, review, subscribe there. Or go to Facebook search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self and give us your rating and feedback and review there. So I appreciate you doing that and taking the time out of your schedule to make that happen and give us that feedback so we can grow into our greatest possible selves and serve you even better. Next is going to be this incredible powerhouse woman who is the uh, is the client, is the apprentice, is the student and master powerhouse powerful woman of the amazing love of my life and she is full of wisdom she's full of life full of depth and i know she's going to be able to share and empower you to achieve all of your goals energetically to feel supported especially if you're out there and you are a woman looking for a group who really gets you and who can support you in achieving your next best self your your next best level your greatest possible self all of it so stay tuned because obsidian is going to be sharing the gold she's super powerful and wise and stay tuned okay so let's talk about obsidian obsidian is a reiki master an energy healer a yoga teacher and an integrative nutrition health coach but most importantly she is the creator and visionary leader behind the house of the goddess Obsidian's sole purpose is to inspire, educate, and empower women through self-awareness and restoring divine nature. She works hands-on with women, both in group environments at the House of the Goddess Women's Circles and on a one-on-one -on -one basis through her Spread Your Wings transformation journey. And she is here to share with us today all of her light and wisdom and love. Obsidian, you ready to rock this? Ready to rock. She's ready to rock. Awesome. You are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you so much for being here today with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My honor. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to dive right in to the theme of the day, which today is sink or swim. So Obsidian, how has this concept shown up in your life? How has it made a difference for you to, to either sink and you know not succeed or to swim and make it to the other side and succeed? How has that showed up for you? So I believe that you don't drown by falling in the water, mm. but you do drown by staying there. Wow. <laughs> and I think um, there's many times in our lives where we have, we know that we want to do better and we want to feel better mm. and move, take these huge leaps forward. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we may feel stuck, you know, like we're falling in quicksand. Yeah. And I feel like the analogy of sinking or swimming is really great to look at because when you just take, you know, hold yourself together, put your shoulders back and take one step at a time. And whether it might be, you know, if you're in a weird state of mind, just going outside, taking a walk, right. Or just catching some sunlight or jumping into a meditation. I think you can um, start to release the energy that feels stuck. Yeah. And it's just that, that idea itself has been really helpful for me. 
And it's something I want to keep with me um, forever, really to knowing that you don't have to be stuck. You have the possibility and the capability to start swimming and moving in the direction that um, your your soul is calling for you to move into. Mm. So. Mm, so beautiful. I love it. And, you know, what I, what I really get from this and I'm hearing throughout the theme and how people are responding is that really there's there's no like sink in terms of like, oh, it's either you succeed or you failed and you're never going to have a shot again. You're like, just give up on life. No, it's usually mm-hmm. what people are saying is that it's just another take, take another step forward. Like swimming mm-hmm. is taking your next step. Swimming is getting a little bit more clarity, getting through the day, asking for help, reaching out for support and i hear that you know that's that's your perspective too is that when people like are struggling or having difficulties it's like ask for help and just show up and take that next step pull your shoulders back and say hey i just got to do this one one more thing get through this next phase and then things will start getting better i'll I'll see the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing Hmm, that's like the mindset of a leader right Mm -hmm. there you know the the topic today is how to empower yourself and become a great leader and it's really through that mindset Mm -hmm. right there you know you just break it down to a simple level of what can i do right now to lift myself a little bit higher what you know getting out of bed and saying i can do this and i'm worthy and i'm Mm. and like the affirmations just talking to yourself with so much love the love that you deserve right this is just like that's it chris so Mm. you know and it just flows out of you so naturally (laughs) i love it i love it so let's dive into more of who obsidian is for anyone who's just now connecting with you tell us a little bit more about yourself I would love to. (laughs) So I am a spiritual healer and um, Obsidian, my name is really grounded in the root of owning and feeling and understanding your trauma Mm. and not being afraid of it, not being afraid of the dark parts of yourself, but really stepping into them and letting them teach you about who you really are and what you're really capable of. Mm. So I would like to begin with the fact that I've actually changed my name legally um, after an intense awakening experience, Mm. many awakening experiences, but um, one in particular that really inspired the name change. And that goes a little bit into who Obsidian is. We can Mm. dive into more of that later, but Um, I am most passionately the founder of the House of the Goddess, which is a community and school for empowered women to really rise, step into their power, start learning about how, like, you know, their, their rocks, their, their poles that are in front of them, the obstacles in life are really opportunities Mm. to definitely there there are opportunities to look at and be like wow you know this is a little bit blinding but i know i know because i know who i am that there's an other side of this and i know that i was being given this challenge because i can leap over it and i can get to the next level so the house of the goddess is a place for women to discover and step into their power Um, we host online virtual women's circles where we all gather together um, and talk about the monthly themes, uh, what's going on um, astro- astrologically, what's going on um, physically. We kind of, it's a safe space to really connect with yourself. So we have a space online for if you're a viewer from around the world and you're interested in joining. And then right now in Vegas, there are also um, women's circles that we have. Awesome. So that's my, that's my passion is the House of Goddess. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So the House of Goddess really helps people who are going through their traumas, their difficulties, their obstacles to overcome those, to have the strength and the mindset to be able to do that. And I know one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was that shadow work, was the discovery, the healing and the integration for that. And I wanted to dive into that. So that's really going to be the main theme of this. And I know like that's that's something that you've gone through so much. And that's something that you've really transcended and, and overcame. And of course, it's life don- It's lifelong, right? There's always more work to do. There's always more integration to do. So I want to go back into your journey and look at really like how did you get to where we are today? How did you get to this perspective? We can dive into, you know, what is Obsidian? Who is that? What is that all about? Uh, but really just take us back to the beginning where you want us to to start knowing about what, what were the events and situations and circumstances that shaped how you evolved and became the woman who's in front of us today? Mm-hmm. So I really have to come out and say straightforwardly that 
I think where I am today is um, a result and an ever evolving process. Um, I've been through really tough things in my childhood. I um, was 11 years old when my father was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. Um, it was really a confusing time because I had no idea what, it, like, this was my father and, um, like, he was just like my protector and mm. my soldier almost. And just watching his body and his mind and his soul start to um, decay and slow down. I mean, his soul was always resilient, so I want to make that clear, but his mm. mind and his body break down was really challenging. And I think that, um, my dad passing away and being in front of him and watching that experience, I would like to give probably like at least 50 to 60 to 70% of the credit to that experience. Wow. Um, I started to really look into death, uh, but you know, I was 11 years old. So, right. I mean, a lot of that trauma, I, I didn't even know what I was experiencing, but I, I started asking questions. Hmm a lot 11 years old. So I'm asking questions about life. Like what literally, like, why am I here? What is this skin? Like mm. why? Like, I don't understand it. Like just looking for answers, asking, craving answers. And, um, slowly, but surely they started to trickle in, um, in the most unexpected ways. I, um, developed a really terrible, um, relationship with my body when I graduated, when I started, um, when I graduated middle school and went to high school, I was always really, um, under a lot of pressure to be skinny, um, to look a certain way, to, uh, talk and be a certain way in front of people, um, through some of my closest family members. And that really, um, triggered some terrible habits with myself. Mm -hmm. I um, suffered with bulimia, so I would um, eat food and then run to the bathroom and throw it up um, for like six, seven years of that. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, and it was funny because during that experience, I didn't really realize how horrible, like how bad it was for me and my soul. Like, mm -hmm. I thought that I was doing myself a service not to, um, to like, you know, be able to eat whatever I wanted and then kind of just let it go by throwing right. up, right? And um over the years, it started to kind of manifest as like these little holes in my psyche, right. places where I just didn't go. Um, you know, I'd, I'd literally run away from pain, run away from anger, you know, um, ignore it. Hmm. So that was all mixed. I had this eating disorder um, even while I had my first spiritual awakening. Hmm. So um, when I was 15 years old, I was with one of my great friends at that time, and we were watching The Secret on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I swear, Chris, and to all of our viewers, that was like a, a light switch that just like flipped wow. on. And mm -hmm. I just like literally in front of my eyes, I recognized that like I am light. I'm the creator of this reality. I am doing it. Yeah, that there's, you know, there's a grand force and there's, source and there's an ultimate being but like i am a part of that and that mm. is the thing right. so that started to click uh when i was 15 but um at that time i really only identified with light i thought that that was just you know i could repress and ignore all of the pain and all of the trauma and i could just be this bright being of light mm. um that in itself caused a lot of pain and um deep introspection and I think it took until I was um, 18 to finally recognize that I was hurting. Like there was a part of me I was really ignoring. I didn't have it all together, even though I thought that I did. And people around me thought that I did because this spiritual wisdom was spewing out of me. And people were like, where is, what is this? Like, yeah. who is this woman? Um, so at that time, I, um, when I was 20, I kind of stepped back a little bit. And uh, wow, it was like really intense. And um, I like, didn't feel comfortable around people. I had social anxiety. Um, I didn't even want to host women's circles, which was my passion at that time. Cause I just didn't feel authentic. I didn't feel like the leader that I knew that I was. And I just didn't want to show up as a leader when I didn't feel that way. Mm. So I did some traveling, um, Peru was beautiful. Mm. And I spent a month there and that was really awakening. 
um, I went to China and I went to Ireland by myself to these places. What right? What had you go to all these places and travel? Like why yeah. Why did no, you do that? That's a great question. I love it. Thank you for asking because that brings a lot of clarity to the fact that when I graduated high school, um, I was under a lot of pressure to go to college and get a degree and then mm -hmm. have a family and you know be successful because that's what my dad had planned for me, right? Um, and I graduated high school and I knew that that was not my path. Mm -hmm. I knew it inside of me so deeply. Um, and my mom kind of pushed me to go to uh, college. So I did for a month and I ended up um, missing one day of class from one of my classes and I flunked the whole class my mom was like this is just not a good time for you to go to school like you need to figure some stuff out you know you're wasting money um so I started traveling I said that's a great way of to learn about life to learn about culture to learn about myself to experience like challenges like right in front of your face you know um just traveling by yourself and being an explorer you have a lot of unforeseen challenges that come through so that's kind of how that uh, the traveling began wow that's awesome so what would you say are some of the biggest lessons that you got along your traveling journeys wow so i think ireland um was when i first realized that i actually had anxiety um mm. <laughs> you know what it's really interesting because i never identified with anxiety i never thought that that was a thing that i had within me um, but when I was traveling, I would sit in coffee shops and I just would be like, I just don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Like, cause when I was in Ireland, um, my other travels, I was being of service and I was working at an orphanage or doing this, doing that. Mm -hmm. But Ireland was just a time to explore and to see the, uh, to see the area. Mm -hmm. So that came up for me and I started kind of stepping into the whole one breath at a time, mm. one step at a time. And just that by itself, like one step at a time, one breath at a time is almost like sink or swim. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. one of those, it's one of those phrases that you can just keep at the forefront of your mind because totally. it can help you get, you know, get out of bed or, or go do that challenging thing that you've been avoiding. Right. So that was one of the main um, lessons that I learned in Ireland, being patient, knowing also like, this is important that you are always 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 guided mm. always protected always and i think when when we forget that and when we think you know when we get worried or anxious about like our safety that's almost when you exude that fear from your body and pe there's people around you and there's you know animals and there's all this type of um beings that feel fear they recognize it so they almost can prey off of you and you're mm. emanating that fear energy so that was huge, recognizing that I'm guided and protected and taking one step at a time. And I was, I, I mean, I could go into lessons from every single part of my travels, but um, in reality, it's one of the greatest things that someone can do for themselves is explore the world and see. Mm. Wow. And do you recommend that everyone does it at least once on their own? Absolutely. I do. I think especially for those that are terribly afraid of doing that and it's mm. way out of their comfort zone. But I also think for people that um, think they have it all figured out and they're all good and everything mm. makes sense, go to Peru and work in an all boys orphanage and mm. just experience some of the stuff that's going on in our world. And then um, tell me, you know, tell us that you've got it all figured out and everything's good. And, you know, it's a very humbling experience. Mm. Wow. That's powerful. I, I love it because I've only traveled like within the United States, a couple times to Mexico and nothing really like overseas. So I really acknowledge you for having the courage to do that and to trust yourself to be, uh, you know, taken care of and guided and supported along the journey, even when you didn't quite understand it yourself. I think that's super awesome. So I want to start getting into this shadow work and why that became a big uh, philosophy for you and, and the shadow side and how did you learn about it and what had you start like diving into it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm a huge storyteller. I believe storytelling and I would like to kind of explain um, the shadow work in a, in a small story of something that happened to me that really okay. broke the, the veil open. Sure. Um, I was at a music festival called uh, Music and um, like Healing Experience Festival called uh, Lightning in a Bottle. Mm -hmm. And um, 
my friends and I were exploring and, um, you know, experimenting with psychedelics and all, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember one specific night where all of my friends were dancing and playing with lights and um, I just couldn't get my flow. I couldn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't feel connected to anyone. I was like, this, this like anger came over me that was like, like, I'm just like wrong. Something's wrong with me. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just not, that's it. Like, I'm just not good. I'm not enough. I'm not. Mm Um, so I walked on my own and to back to the campsite, which was a long way from where I was. And I found myself in this field looking up at the stars. Mm-hmm. And as I'm looking there, I, um, can you not, I saw these two lights, one was green and one was purple and they were dancing with one another in the sky. Mm-hmm. It was such a magical experience to see that with your eyes and I started to recognize like I am a part of something so much greater, so much greater than anything I can even I've ever even conceived of. Mm. And I had that little fleck, that little tiny fleck of spark. And I started to walk my way back to the campsite to have some time by myself to kind of um, feel and reflect a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Take a note, like I was still in a really low place. That was just a tiny little spark. Right. Um, so I get back to the campsite and I'm sitting in my car and I'm taking my makeup off and I look in my eyes and suddenly there's like this, this tunnel that I'm staring into. And it was a very dark, dark tunnel. And I see myself at the end of this tunnel and my birth name is Mackenzie. So it's almost Mm -hmm. like this, um, picture of Mackenzie, right? And then Obsidian is here, Mackenzie is here. And I'm looking at Mackenzie from this, from these other, from this, this, over, this observer mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching her like pretend that she's okay. Pre- like smile when she's not happy, you know, mm-hmm. like fake it, like really fake it and give this facade. And I'm watching her like dye her hair super blonde so she can fit in. And I'm watching her put makeup on and not feel like she can go out in public until she has her. I'm just seeing all of this, like this stuff in myself that was like really haunting, Mm. you know? Um, A lot of dark stuff came up in this, in this vision. And then it fast forwards and like, almost like the tunnel cuts short a little bit. And it's now just like obsidian and then another mirror of myself that didn't, and take a note at this time, I wasn't fully aware of obsidian yet. You Mm. know, I was still kind of stepping into her. And I saw this other being that was looking at me straight in the face. And she had these eyes that were piercing like a lion, right? And she was looking straight into my soul, in my heart. And and like, I started to feel this beat in my chest and something in me started to shake. And it was that point that I felt something in my root that was like, oh my gosh, I am powerful. I am strong. I am beautiful. I am worthy. Like all of this, just this realization came. And then from that moment forward, um, I knew that this embodiment of this woman that I saw in this vision would be a journey. And this Mm. would be something that it wouldn't take a second to step into her. You know, it would take time and it might, you know, take years. It might be the rest of my life. You know, who knows? There's no time. It's, you know, time isn't real. But I committed at that moment to um, stepping into her. Mm. And you know, I really believe that shadow work is the highest form of light work, hmm. right? Wow. That in itself. Um, so after that experience, um, I got home from the festival and I went on a trip to Zion with a few of my friends. And Obsidian, the name Obsidian was not introduced to me yet. This was just you me describing who I saw. And I was walking into this crystal shop and I was mesmerized by these geodes. And the owner of the crystal shop came up to me and I was standing next to my really best friend at that time, Jade. And he looked at us and he said, hi, my name is Patrick. And he said, hi, Patrick, like, how are you? And then he looked at Jade, which is her real name. And um, he said, you must be Jade. And just somehow he knew this, it was crazy. And then he looked at me and then he said, huh? Like he stepped back a little bit and and he looked at me like in my eyes, like deeply and he's like, you must be obsidian. And I was so shocked by that. It was like a miracle. And you know, like something happens before your eyes, you're like, I cannot believe that just happened. Like, I'm just in awe. 
Um, and I felt this ripple into my whole being. And I was like, whoa, mm. <laughs> that's who I am. That is who I am. Um, so then I tried the name on and um, it really worked for me. I felt like it was in alignment with really who I am, the mm. true, the spiritual healer, the part of me that is willing to look, uh, the, the whole being of me that is willing to look at the darkness, mm. willing to be present in the times where I'm not feeling my best or doing my best or completely on point and being completely tender and okay and compassionate and loving towards those sides of myself because that is the only way that I can heal and get to greater states. Wow. That is so powerful. I had so many like chills going on when you were saying that. <laughs> He's like looked at me. You must be obsidian. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> that's that's like seriously incredible. And uh, I think it just really reinforces the we're all supported and we're all guided like mm -hmm. in, in, on our journeys, even if we don't realize or recognize the signs. This mm -hmm. one was like a sign in your face saying, hey, this yeah. is who you are. So recognize it and own it. And I think that's super powerful. Um, yeah. So as far as like diving into that shadow work, where do we need to start Obsidian? How do we how do we like start taking on these aspects of ourselves that we're not proud of, that we don't want to look at, that we're even afraid of or intimidated by or, or whatever else it might be? What's the foundation? Where do we start with that? Mm -hmm. I think the first place um, that we start when we're open to looking at our shadow and, mm -hmm. and, and integrating it is um, looking at the areas that you feel really resistant, looking mm -hmm. at the places, you know, recognizing, being an observer, right? Like not trying to fix anything, not trying to jump in and be like, okay, this isn't right. Like anxiety comes up, you know, oh my gosh, just watching, mm -hmm. watching, stepping back and, and watching. I watched an interview um, with Eckhart Tolle, the author of A Power of Now and New Earth and all those amazing books. Mm -hmm. And he explained his enlightenment and his first click was he was in this really deep, dark depression mm -hmm. and he was laying in his bed. And then, you know, he was asking for answers because he wanted to commit suicide, right? He was on that brink where he wanted to leave this earth and he asked for answers. And this light came in. Um, and basically separated his ego and his higher self. And he looked at the piece of himself that was depressed from this different perspective and was like, wow, so that's who you are. Like this is, you know, it was almost like just seeing it, you know, mm. seeing these, these pieces of ourselves and saying, oh, I see you now. Like, mm. let's come together and let's, let's work together. So to answer your question more specifically, I think the first place that you start is awareness, hmm. looking at yourself, looking at the places in your life where um, you don't feel like you're on point and being compassionate and um, being loving and being patient and being present. Hmm. Wow. So it's like really start with observing and being aware of the sensations and different things that are going on inside of us because when people are judging themselves or criticizing themselves and have an energy or an attachment to what they fully being able to receive it and integrate it and own that part of ourselves. So it's like the first step is to step back and watch and have that kind of observer uh, perspective on our life mm -hmm. and the things that we're noticing. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. First cool. step. Cool. What would, what would you say is next to being able to like own those parts and integrate those parts? So when you're completely aware of the pieces of yourself that um, are almost like split, mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of seeing yourself as whole, letting these pieces of yourself teach you more about who you are mm -hmm. and really meditating on them, looking at them and being, you know, maybe not trying to do too much at once by looking at one piece of yourself. So maybe you're experiencing a vast amount of jealousy in your life. So taking that one piece and sitting with it and being patient and, you know, doing different exercises. Like, you know, I practice a lot of yoga. I love to journal. Um, I love to meditate, all of these different things, whatever you, your own spiritual practice, but have this one specific of yourself that you're looking at mm -hmm. and work on that at that time, right? So don't put too much on your plate, like, wow, I'm out of whack. But right. one step, start peeling back the layers, looking at the whole pie that is whole, 
that is never split, that is never away from you. The pie is whole, but separating them a little bit and saying, I'm gonna work with this piece now. And for this week or for this month, I'm gonna work solely on my anger, solely mm. on my jealousy. That's, I mean, that's the next step. And then I think we go all around the wheel and then sometimes we're gonna have to keep going around the wheel and then we're gonna go backwards and we're gonna go this way and this way. Hmm. But I think it's a matter of being um, open and being committed to doing that work. Okay, and so you talked about journaling these different tools and ways to like approach it. Can you be a little bit more specific on what do we inquire about? How do we actually work on it? What is our objective? Is our objective to heal it? Is our objective to understand it, to integrate it, to get rid of it, to, you know, like what is our objective and mm -hmm. how can we best facilitate our, our evolution, becoming that greatest possible self and ultimately healing? Mm -hmm. To facilitate your evolution, um, you would look at one piece, right? So we talked about anger or jealousy or resentment, whatever you're feeling and open up your sphere. So whether that be your sacred space through journaling or meditating or whatever your spiritual practice is, mm -hmm. and thinking and starting to tap into your feelings, starting to tap into, um, you know, there's so many different modalities of healing, like so many different, but start writing, start like kind of um, a stream of consciousness writing. If you haven't, mm -hmm. if you've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And really just let everything come out and let it all come out so much so. And then understand it, understand, you know, where it's exactly coming from. And then I don't know if you've heard of the map of consciousness, but there's places like, you know, if you have fear, you can move into acceptance or, mm. you know, this into that. So see, okay, so I'm feeling fear right now and I'm looking at why I'm fearful. I'm seeing that, you know, fear is not real that's not the word of god that's not the word of the universe the, mm -hmm. you know source so i'm moving slowly up the scale to accepting where i'm at right so it's just one step at a time so moving from those darker places to lighter places mm -hmm. so if you're interested in this work um and you're watching right now definitely look at the map of consciousness to help kind of facilitate this healing work um and maybe look at um, when you're doing your healing around whatever it may be looking at whatever that fear, whatever that problem is and where you want to be on this map, what, what correlates with it perfectly. And then kind of navigating yourself there with that um, A plus B equals C, right? Mm. It, it's almost like um, a sequence, a sequence of healing that you can follow. Okay. So it's for, you mentioned fear. Let's use fear and acceptance. I'm at fear. I want to get to acceptance. I journal to say, what is it about fear that I'm noticing? What is it? How, how do I see it? Where does it come up in my life? And just get it all out on paper. How does that process get us from fear to acceptance? Mm -hmm. So I think that the matter is, is not necessarily like I'm feeling fear, but more like this you know, maybe um, I'm afraid of being home alone at night, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the doors are shut. I'm feeling alone. Like just dive it, letting this like this like void come out of you. Mm -hmm. And then looking at it, right? And then as you're finished writing and you feel complete, looking at where you're at and what you just let out and almost seeing that completely as like a part of you that's that's split. Remember coming back into that perspective that like, you know, these fears are not us, but there's mm. something that we can kind of understand to get to that greatest possible self to get to that next level. Right. So using that, that energy of I'm just feeling alone or in despair and then looking at it and accepting it by being like, okay, I'm feeling this. I'm okay with this breathing, being patient and then slowly starting to work your way. I mean, Chris, it, it, sometimes it's not an immediate thing. Right. Just like, you know, just like if you do yoga one time, you brush your teeth one time, you work out one time, you're not gonna see the results. Hmm. It's a matter of persistency and keep doing this work, keep expressing, because like we said, things will just keep coming up. But it's knowing that you, in one healing session, you can get to the next letter, um, the next step on the ladder, you mm -hmm. can. And it's just a matter of, having the courage to keep taking those steps. How will we know if we are like healing these areas and these, these shadow aspects of ourselves? Well, you will feel them, especially when you're in circumstances where you are something used to trigger you. I mean, I think that we recognize it the most when we're in a situation where we used to react a certain way, hmm. but now this time when it's coming up, we realize that, Oh, 
I'm in control. Mm. My fear is not in control here. I get to consciously make these decisions. I get to choose a different route now. Mm. Would you say that um, darkness and negativity are the same thing or are they different things? Like our, our, our dark aspects of ourselves, our shadow selves, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I would think that they might be part of the same realm. I mm -hmm. think that they're not necessarily the same and because negativity is really like, um, I think it comes out of your mind, mm -hmm. you know, negativity is like, oh, you know, today is this, I'm so upset that I have to go to work. You know, that's negativity. Darkness is more like feeling like you need to hide from the world or feeling like you, you know, you need to retreat or being completely turned off to what's happening in front of you because you're hurting so badly. So mm. they're, they're, at, they're parts of the same void, but they're definitely not the same thing. And knowing that negativity is more of the mind mm. and darkness is more of like the shadow, which is part of the soul mm. is a very healing thing. Right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think for me, what I've, what I've come to like understand it as is when I have a, part of myself that comes out that I'm not proud of. For example, like when I was younger, I used to like get into all kinds of trouble and, you know, I would, I would go into like candy shops or stores and receive things without buying them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And so like I would do these things and I like carried that mindset into like even a couple of years ago saying like, wow, you know, like I feel like such a crappy person to, to want these things to, you know, want mm -hmm. to even have this thought of, well, I could take it if I wanted to, you know, it's like, and there, there's that shadow aspect of myself and like the way I see it, it's, it's not so much like negativity. It's more of a part that I don't want to be there that I'm not mm -hmm. proud of. It's a mm -hmm. thought pattern. It's a being, it's an energy that I'm not, um, I'm not proud of, like, I don't, I don't like it. I, I resist it. I resent it. Yeah. I wish it would go away. And so like, that's for me what comes up and I'm like, okay, you know, like I, I get to heal that. Like, and then, like you said, with your process of the journaling, the stream of consciousness, it's like, what is it about that, that how I used to be when I was younger and having these kinds of thoughts, like, what is it about that, that I'm so resistant to, that I'm so unproud of, that I'm afraid of, that I resist, you know, super powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, I definitely want to mention too, like looking at the sun and the moon, right? And the sun is masculine and the moon is feminine. Mm -hmm. And there is, the sun is, you know, most days, unless the weather is faulty, it's shining really bright. And mm -hmm. it's the masculine aspect of doing and creating, right? Mm -hmm. Creating mm -hmm. this, this light. And then we're looking at the moon and the moon is more the feminine, the shadow. And sometimes we go through phases in the moon where she doesn't even show herself at all. You know, mm -hmm. she's completely hidden. And being that this, these are fundamentals of nature. We have to know that this is normal. We have mm -hmm. like, this is inherent in being a human and going through your healing process. You have to, you get to look at these experiences of yourself that are dark and are stuff that you resist. Mm. And it's and it's very exciting because they teach you more about who you are. Mm. And you chose this, right? We chose to come into this life and forget who we are so we can recreate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so powerful. So I'm I'm curious how do we how do we get excited? Like you mentioned, it's exciting. How do we get excited? Where does that come from for you to be excited about taking these aspects of ourselves on? Because I think a lot of people are probably more daunted and more intimidated by it than excited. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's so many ways to spark <laughs> inspiration in your life. Totally so many ways. I think um, I'll mention three. Okay. One way to get extremely excited about your healing Um is to imagine what is possible for yourself in your mm. life being that you're an infinite being and you can mm. have absolutely anything do anything like kind of meditate on what's possible for you and know that it's possible it's not mm. some way out far out concept that's unattainable it is possible right and knowing that you can get there in your way of getting there is by walking up this ladder and each step gets easier and easier and e easier because you develop the tools to be able to these challenges 
Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the, that's the first one is kind of recognizing what is possible and discovering what you really love to have, whether that's a million dollars or whether that's a family that loves you or whether that's to travel the world, whatever it may be, it's completely possible for you. So the next thing um, that I love to do and has been really helpful for me mm -hmm. is by um, taking care, self-care, taking care of my body, my mind and my spirit, um, because and although this is like, some people might be like, but how is that supposed to get me excited? Watching yourself grow, like mm. going to the gym and being committed to it and watching yourself get muscles or whitening your teeth or doing the extra thing to get, you know, to improve, it inspires you because you are, you can visually see yourself improving. Mm. So meditating, taking extremely amazing care of yourself. And next, you know, I could go on with these, but I think the next one um, that's really important is to fuel yourself with inspiration, mm -hmm. to be around inspirational people, to listen to inspirational podcasts, to go to these sources, like look at your, your group, your top five people in your life. And if you're not completely feeling like you're getting fooled from inspiration by them, maybe hang out with Tony Robbins or hanging out with Chris Burns or hanging out with these people on YouTube or yeah. through their, you know, through their sources, hang out with the people that inspire you and let these concepts kind of marinate into your psyche and encourage you that your greatest possible self is indeed possible and mm. you are worth it. And I think, I mean, those things in itself will definitely light your fire of inspiration. Mm. Um, you know, Michael, my, my life partner told me that, you know, before um, I like came into his life, sometimes he had a difficult time finding that zeal, finding that like um, excitement for just living. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that one of the main elements of our relationship that has really helped him grow is just that I get excited about everything. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm excited to have, um, to watch a Netflix movie with him and have popcorn, right? or I'm excited to uh, drink my morning cup of coffee. I'm excited, you know, just like let the random little elixirs of life and be around those people that, that spark that in you. And then let yourself just be amazed by them or looking at a puppy or like, there's just so many things like just noticing the beauty around you, looking at the sun and watching it shine and just like being amazed at this life and the possibilities for us. Were you always that way? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't think, I think I've always been really happy. I've always been a seer. Um, no, I don't think I've always been extremely happy. I think I've always been like known like that I'm okay, known that, you know, I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And, but I have always been able to see, I think um, the more spiritual work that I've done, Chris, and that's why I encourage all of these viewers to, to do this work and to take it one step at a time is it gets, better like this light this happiness that i'm feeling is really authentic it's like it's and that's what that's what happens as a result of following your truth and being inspired by light itself hmm. that's powerful i love it i love it and what i hear is that as you get more and more tapped into yourself and what inspires you, whatever that is, whether it's the moon, whether it's Netflix, whether it's, you know, a butterfly, uh, whatever it might be, right? Like there's so many different sources of inspiration around us. And, you know, one of the things that I, I had to like come to terms with is if I want something to be a habit for me, then I have to set up a discipline of it. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I had to become disciplined in my perspective mm -hmm. shifts in my, in my being happy, in my being celebratory, in my being appreciative, appreciative. So I think that that's something that's really important. That and the reason why I asked, like, have you always been like this? I think it's it's a practice and a discipline through the journaling, the inner work that you've done, the conversations, the people that you're around, the environment that you're in, all that good stuff. Like that's how you've been able to become so evolved and so authentic in your light, in your love, and how you show up. So for anyone who's listening or watching, like really trust that wherever you're at, just keep taking those steps, take that next step and ask for help, ask for support, coaching. If you want to be in Obsidian's group in her, in her uh, house of the goddess, you know, really find those sources that are going to be inspiring for you to be able to, to reach your next level, to ignite that within you. And I, I think one of the biggest ways that I've found that inspiration is being around other people who have that 
contagious excitement and um, you know vision for what's possible in their life because I'm like, well, shoot, if that's possible for them, what, what can I do? Let's get to work. Let's start journal. Let's figure it out. Yeah, let's paint. Yeah. Let's map out the vision. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. Yes, 100%. Yeah, so that, that's super powerful. So in terms of the, the lessons that you've gained – from doing this shadow work and, and the self-love, self-discipline practices, what are some other big things, big ahas that you've discovered along the journey that have, um, you know, really you, you can see that they've noticeably changed how you show up with people, how you approach other people, how you approach yourself, how you uh, think about yourself, self-image. What else have you transformed around yourself? Huge one and first and foremost um, is really like comparison is the root of all suffering is the mm. root of like all it's like that that right there is huge because um we can look at people that might already have what we want or might already have the body that we want or the children that we want you know this anything and think that we're not good enough we're not you know that's huge and i think it's um, especially like my journey in fitness, because I really see myself with like strong muscles. I'm working on it. Right. Like I, I want that. I want to embody that. Right. Yeah. So when I'm at the gym and I look around people that are already there, it, letting like that, and instead of comparing myself and saying, I'm not good enough yet, mm. but letting their example inspire me to keep moving. Right. Yeah. So one thing, compassion, um, comparison is the root of all suffering. And compassion almost slipped out. So that's the next one that I must say. Mm -hmm. um, compassion, right? Compassion for yourself. Compassion for others that are suffering. And I want to make a huge um, distinction between empathy and compassion, right? Because as a spiritual healer, it's very easy for me to walk into a room and feel all of the pain, all of like, I can look at someone and kind of like see where they're at. It's, you know, it's kind of, um, comes to me very naturally. And if I like start dwindling, which is really easy for me to do sometimes because I'm in, I, I get like interested, you know, in, in this mm -hmm. stuff. But when you start to like think about something and pick up someone else's energy, that's empathy. And it's a great thing to be empathic. Sure. But I think moving upward is compassion. Hmm. seeing where someone is and um, holding space, holding a compassionate space for them, not trying to change them, not trying to come up there and tell them what they should be doing. Or, you know, even in your, like, it's just compassion with yourself, not trying to rush to your healing. You can't rush it anyways, right? Hmm. So we have um, compassion. So that's huge. Compassion for yourself, compassion for the world around you. Um, so we have comparison, not to, the comparison is the root of suffering. Compassion is the epitome for great connection and healing. Mm. And um, I feel next, the most important thing, like number one, and I'm sharing it with all of you and the listeners, because it is like, what's, it helps me every single day mm -hmm. is um, connecting to source connecting to a higher power, connecting to whatever in like whatever you believe gives you life force. Connect whether that's I mean whether it's nature, whether right. whatever that may be for you, but connecting to it, creating a relationship with it, talking to source, talking mm -hmm. to nature, just working on that relationship because that is how everything else will come into place. Super powerful. I love I love that last one. I love that last one especially um, because it, a lot of people think it's like strange or, or the, the conversation. It's not so much of a conversation. It's more like telling God, source, creator, nature, universe, whatever, like telling them what to do or blaming or, you know, for expressing, expressing frustrations. And I think that's an important part of it. And there's also like this aspect of listening. Like, how do I listen to these to into nature? How do I listen to God, source, spirit, creator? How do I how do I open myself up to listen? Like, and for me, I, I always like I'm I'm having these different relationships with my body, with nature. Like, I went to uh, Cabo last year, and I was like talking to the ocean, right, and like giving my pain to the ocean, and like saying, hey, you know, take my pain. Thank you so much. You know, what what do I need to do to release this uh, even more and to let go, and so I can step up. Up to my whole whole nother level kind of thing so it's like having that conversation is super super awesome then connecting with it connecting deep into that conversation and have a conversation with anything whether it's like you know a lamppost or like your body or your conversation with money i was just um looking at my phone the other day 
And oftentimes I look at my phone as a source of resentment, as a, a um, something of, that's a burden to me because I have to like, I have to manage a lot of different conversations and stuff going on at one time. And so like when I looked at Facebook, I'm like, you are like before I subconsciously, I'm like, you're a piece of, you know what, you know, like you're a piece of junk. I hate you. And I just like switched that to, man, I'm so grateful for the power of this tool. And I'm so grateful for all the communications, all the conversations that I, I can have with it. Mm-hmm. And it's like simply by slowing down and choosing my conversation rather than being stuck in a default like autopilot conversation that I am not in control of or not being responsible for. Um, so I love these, you know, comparison. That's the root of all, you know, the insecurity, all the unhappiness, super powerful compassion um, being as the source of connecting with people right as the as the the healing instead of just empathy of hey you know i understand your situation it's like compassion brings a whole nother level of holding space for someone a whole a whole nother level of like i understand you and i want you to know that i'm here for you and i want you to know that that like whatever you're going through whether you stay stuck or whether you evolve like just know i'm here for you and you have someone who cares about you versus empathy is like more mechanical right it's 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 better than uh sympathy which is like being down in the hole with someone and like sharing that pain empathy is like hey i understand what you're going through but compassion is like a whole nother level of love that is being brought to someone's situation and um how they're responding to it and then connecting to the higher power is super super important too because If we're not acknowledging the roots from which we came from, whether it's our parents and celebrating them, however good that they did or bad that they did, doesn't matter. Just say thank you for what we did get. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you. And we can even reframe some of that stuff. If, you know, there there was challenging times, it's like, well, they taught me how to not be like them. And for that, I'm super grateful. You know, I'm super, super appreciative. Um, But also the roots of universe, source, creator, uh, the minerals and matter in the ground from which we came like that is so freaking powerful to connect with that and to celebrate that and to have a new conversation with that rather than i think what a lot of people are born with which is a very lifeless um disregarding like emotionless conversation with the world around us and matter and nature and and source even in um like religion and stuff, I still think that that conversation is very mechanical. I think a lot of people just do the actions, but they're not really being the person who they know to be to experience the full benefits of those actions. Like my family uh, did grace a lot, like it growing up. And oftentimes I'd be like, this is like, just so rote it's so just mechanical it's so like are you even feeling this and then later on we started integrating after like our standard prayer that was the same every time we started saying what we're grateful for and sending like cut like a custom in the moment inspired blessing that completely changed the dynamic of of my relationship with it and i think our our relationship around dinner and our family and stuff so it's super cool Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Um. (laughs) i love it i love it obsidian awesome so we're beginning to wrap up and we want to know the final takeaways final things that you really want our audience to get from this interview Mm. so viewers and listeners if you take anything away from this interview from this time with um chris and i please know that you are beautiful worthy completely compassionate, strong, and capable of anything that you dream of. It's just a matter of you stepping in and knowing that and embodying that and telling yourself that all the time. Um, I also definitely want to tell you that you have greatness within you. Your greatest possible self is calling for you and start walking towards him or her and Put a smile on your face and have courage to reach greater heights and to embody this person that you dream of becoming Mm. and share your message with others and how you did it. It looks different for each of us, but we need to share and become compassionate and loving and connected beings. And it starts with you. Mm. Amen. Amen, Obsidian. I take (laughs) ditto. Ditto to all of that. Obsidian, how can our audience stay connected with you and what do we want them to do next? 
You can find me at Obsidian White on Facebook. So O-B-S-I-D-I-A-N. I think it's in the show notes. So I'm there. Um, my Instagram is inspired by Obsidian. And if you are a goddess a, and you identify as a woman, I would love to have you a part of the House of the Goddess. Um, we offer a ton of content, a ton of resources um, in a whole community of sisters, like-minded souls that would love to support you and encourage you. You can find more about that on houseofthegoddess.online. Mm-hmm. We also have a private Facebook page. You can type in House of the Goddess um, or send me a message. And if you're interested in diving in and jumping in and going one step further, um, feel free to register as a House of the Goddess member, and you can find more details about that and how that works at the House of the Goddess online. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Obsidian, you are a stellar light in this world. Aww. And I'm so, so, so stoked for your evolution, your growth, your shining, and all that you're bringing to the world. And this mm. is just the freaking beginning. So I really acknowledge you for stepping into your power and holding space for these women who are having difficult times and who also know that they have greatness within them so that you can be that mirror for them so that they can shine even brighter with you. I hear it and I see you and I respect you and I love you. And I just want to say, Chris, that you remind me of a phoenix. You are on fire. You know that and you breathe that and you live that. So, you know, go out and like make fire in this world and you got this and I see you and you're just like a little flame. I just want to like wrap my arms around you. So (laughs) thank you. Thank you, Obsidian. I appreciate you. I love you too. And have the best day ever. Thanks for coming on and we'll see you very soon. Okay. See you soon. Bye everyone.